Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I will be explaining everything all about Aperture. What it is, how to use it, what does it mean, how do we read it, how do we use it on our cameras. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. What is Aperture? Aperture is one third of the exposure triangle, a key element that helps us to achieve perfect exposure. The exposure triangle is a key element in photography that fully explains how shutter speed, aperture, and ISO all work together to create a correctly exposed photograph. Aperture in photography is very similar to the way the pupil of our eyes work. Since the wider our pupils are, basically when our eyes are dilated, the more light will pass through. The smaller our pupils are, the less light will pass through. Very similar to aperture, our pupils open wider when in low light, and our pupils become narrower when exposed to excessive amounts of light. So if you ever had an eye exam, which I'm sure many of us all have at one point or another, and you've got your, your pupils dilated, that's basically when the doctor's putting eye drops into both of your eyes, and these special drops cause the pupils to widen or dilate fully, which allows more light to come into the eye. Our aperture works exactly the same way in our camera. Now, if you're lost as up to now and this analogy is not helping you whatsoever, just remember this. Aperture is the opening on our camera's lens, which allows light to travel or pass through and enter into our camera. The amount our aperture opens or closes dictates how much light will enter into our camera. So the wider our aperture opens, the more light will come in. The smaller the aperture opens, the less light enters into our cameras. Okay, so now that we understand what aperture is, we have to further understand how to measure it and how to read it on a camera. Aperture is measured in f-stops. Well, what in the world is an f-stop? An f-stop is basically the ratio between the focal length and the aperture blade diameter. It means that the diameter of your aperture blades in the lens will be precisely, for example, 50 milliliters if you're using a 50 milliliter lens on your camera. F-stops, also known as F-numbers, are the numbers that appear on your camera as you change or adjust the aperture. They will usually appear like this, F-2.8, F-4.0, etc, etc, as shown in the diagram. Always remember that the higher the F-stop number, the smaller the aperture. The smaller the F-stop number, the larger the aperture is. So as you get further into photography and you start or continue learning photography more and more, you'll notice photographers referring to lenses by their focal lengths or the millimeters. And they will say, oh, that lens is 50 milliliters. That one's 85 milliliters. F slash 1.4. And that will determine or tell a lot about that lens. And by knowing what these all mean, you're able to know which lens to use when you're photographing a subject, whether that lens is good in low light, whether it's not. But let's look at another topic that is related to aperture and that is very essential to understanding aperture and how it is in correlation with our cameras and photography. And that term we are going to learn about is depth of field. What is depth of field? What does it mean? And what does it have to do with aperture? How does it correlate? So the depth of field, or abbreviated DOF, is the distance between the nearest and the furthest objects that is sharp or in focus within an image captured with, on a camera or with a camera. So basically it is how close or far an object or your subject is to the background. Basically what's in focus, what's not in focus, how blurred out is your background or how much detail is shown in your background, just in simpler terms so you can understand. So to break this down further, a wider aperture creates a shallower depth of field. A shallow depth of field isolates the subject from the background. A narrower aperture creates a deep depth of field, which allows more of those details 
within the image or the photograph to be in focus. So that means that the background, the middle ground, and the foreground are all in focus and you can see all the little details of every aspect of the photograph. Also, be sure to check out my ebook on Amazon entitled A Beginner's Guide to Fully Manual Mode to find out more information how to fully shoot in manual mode to really match your camera settings and to demystify shutter speed, ISO, and aperture and to really get the full maximum value out of your camera to take really exceptional photographs. The link will be in my description if you are interested in purchasing my ebook and reading it to find out more information to take your photography to the next level. I hope you got some value out of this video and learned something new. Be sure to drop me a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you guys next week.